It's time to learn. Welcome to my classroom, everybody. Today, I will be teaching you how you can use Mario Kart to pass all of your classes this upcoming year. Probably not all of them, but a few of them. Let's see what we're learning today. So the first subject we will be learning today, ladies and gentlemen, is English. Well, some of you guys may call it language arts. Some of you guys may call it just writing class or reading class, but this is more writing focused. And the game we're gonna use is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In the main menu of the game, there are small tabs at the bottom of the screen, such as your race stats, amiibo costumes, MKTV, and Nintendo Labo functionality. The tab I am focusing on for this subject is info. In this tab, there are descriptions of many aspects of the game, such as driving techniques, items, and battle modes. If you go into the items category, you can notice that a lot of the descriptions have incomplete first sentences. The bananas description says, will send anyone who hits it into a spin. Normal sentence structure is formatted by a concept called subject verb agreement. This is something you learn very early on, but basically to speak formally, you have to include the subject at the beginning of the sentence and the verb after the subject, making sure it is the correct verb used on the subject. This sentence, however, does not have a subject. Of course, it is well implied that the banana is the subject here, so the sentence shall go as follows. The banana will send anyone who hits it into a spin. Banana is the subject and will send is the verb. Will send is the last thing I want to talk about for this class. This sentence is in future tense, meaning the action here will take place at a future point in time. In the future, the banana will send someone who hits it into a spin. The banana has not spun out anyone yet, but when you use it, it just might. The other two tenses are past and present. If we were to take this sentence and turn it into past tense, how would we do it? Well, we simply change the verbs. Now the sentence reads, the banana has sent anyone who hit it into a spin. In present tense, the sentence would read, the banana sends anyone who hits it into a spin. Now that you know this sentence, let's practice this on another item, say the spiny shell. Here's what the sentence looks like. Here's what a completed sentence looks like. And here's how the sentence would look like in all of the tenses. Now just take a look at the rest of the items on this list and you'll be a master writer in no time. The next class that you can pass simply by playing Mario Kart is art. Believe it or not, if you have a copy of Mario Kart DS, there is literally an art section. You can go into the options menu, press edit and press emblem and boom, you have an entire palette that you can mess with and you can draw whatever you would like on that emblem board, whether it's a great creation, an awful creation, you can spend hours on here just listening to Mario, bopping back and forth to the music as you are drawing, painting, virtually creating whatever you want. And yeah, the more practice you do in this emblem, the better you will get in real life. I promise you that. Next up, we will be learning all about geography. Now, what game, what recent Mario Kart game has used geography, real world locations in their Mario Kart tracks? Hmm. Oh, Mario Kart Tour. I know you guys probably hate the game, but luckily for you, some of the Mario Kart Tour tracks are making their way into Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So you can use those tour tracks in 8 Deluxe and learn all about the landmarks and the geographical regions that is New York, Tokyo, Paris, and Sydney. But in Mario Kart Tour, there are many other tracks that you can learn about, that you can just drive around, obviously not at the moment because they vary tour by tour, but if you were able to record some of the tracks or just remember off the top of your head what some of these tracks look like, and you'll be able to recognize some of the famous landmarks that exist within each of those courses, and they are pretty accurate to the actual real world locations of these courses. So you gotta give the marker tour developers credit for that. They are helping you learn the geographical locations of some of the greatest landmarks in the world and some of the biggest cities and countries in the world. Next up, did you guys know you can actually use Mario Kart to pass your history class? Now I know what you're thinking. How is there any historical facts and learning material in Mario Kart? Well, there technically isn't, but there is an obscure Mario Kart game called Mario Kart Live Home Circuit where you can create your own Mario Kart tracks using your living room or your basement or whatever room you got you can use to create your own Mario Kart tracks. Yes, I know it's a little bit on the expensive side, but if you can get by that and if you have a copy of the game, it is a lot of fun and you can learn some history. For example, if you are learning about the United States presidents and you need to know all the presidents in order, I know very weird, but so if you're from America, you might need to learn that. So if you need to learn about the US presidents, just print out pictures of each of the presidents. You can hang them up on the back of a chair 
and then you just have to hang him up in order and then have Mario drive around all of the presidents in order or you could do four at a time like I'm doing right here and then when you race around your track you'll go through the presidents in order it's brilliant and you can have fun playing Mario Kart while learning about what order the presidents served their term in the US office you can do this for a lot of historical facts, I believe, and I think this would be a great way to learn history if you have a copy of Market Life Home Circuit. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can use Mario Kart to pass your science class. That is correct. There are actually quite a bit of science equations and topics in Mario Kart that aren't really talked about, but are utilized and put into practice every time you race in Mario Kart, and you just don't even realize it, but I'm going to bring it to the light right now. Let's first talk about good old Isaac Newton and his three laws of motion. The first law is called inertia, which states that a body at either resting state or in constant motion will remain in those states unless a force acts upon it. This happens the very millisecond a race begins. Your cart is in a constant resting state, but as long as you hold the A button down at two and get a rocket start, that is the force acting upon your vehicle that is causing it to change speeds. Newton's second law of motion is a simple equation. Yep, that one. Us holding the A button or the character pressing the gas pedal is the force being applied to make the cart move. If we want to calculate that force, we have to take a look at the acceleration and weight stats of our vehicle combination. It is worth noting that mass and weight are scientifically different, but for the purposes of this video, they are similar enough to where we will use them interchangeably. If you use the all gold combo, its weight is 5.25 and its acceleration is 1.75. Multiply these together and you get a force of 9.1875 which in your classes is usually labeled as newtons. Lastly, the third law of motion is action versus reaction. When two bodies collide, they apply an equal and opposite force to each other. When you race on a track and collide straight into a wall, you will bounce back ever so slightly. That is the wall applying the same amount of force that you applied to the wall. If you approach the wall with greater weight or acceleration, then the wall will push you back harder to compensate for the extra force. Lastly, I just want to talk about the concept of velocity. Velocity is how fast your character can travel a certain distance away from the starting point. For example, let's say we're racing on Excite Bike Arena. Let's pretend the length between the starting line and the first turn is 300 meters. If I travel that distance in 15 seconds, then my velocity is 300 over 15 or 20 meters per second. If, however, I finish one lap in 40 seconds and a lap of Excite Bike Arena is 800 meters, then I won't have a velocity of 20 meters per second, but a velocity of zero. That's because technically distance isn't one of the variables, but rather Rather, a term called displacement. Distance is the amount of ground covered in any direction and is used to calculate the speed, which means our one lap speed would be 20 meters per second. Displacement, however, is the distance away from the starting position in a straight line. In the first example, our distance away from the start line was 300 meters, which is why we got a velocity of 20 meters per second. But in our second example, we completed a full lap and returned at the exact same point we started at. So while we covered a distance of 800 meters, meters, our displacement is zero meters since our finishing position was at the exact same spot where we started. That's it for science. I know I didn't cover every science topic, but I hope this helped some of you. Now the last class that you guys can use Mario Kart to learn and to help you pass in is math. That's right. About five or six years ago, I made a video solely dedicated to passing all of your math classes, no matter what grade you were in. This is going to be not as specific as that, but we will go over a bunch of math related equations and topics and just general math things that you can use Mario Kart for to help you study and that you guys might already be good at if you guys play Mario Kart regularly. Okay, so I won't get into as much mathematical detail in this video as I did last video, but I will cover a few topics I find fascinating. First, we are going to be talking about the four basic equations yet again, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You do addition all the time simply by racing the game. If you come in first place on one race, you get 15 points. If you get second the next race, you get 12 points, and thus your total equals 27 points after two races because 15 plus 12 equals 27. We are in the midst of the booster course pass at the time of recording this video so we can use that info to help us with subtraction. We know that there are 48 total courses to be released and if we count the total number of courses currently released, we get 16 courses. If we want to know how many courses we have yet to be released, we do 48 minus 16 and we get 32 courses. Next up is a multiplication. Want to know how many total character card combinations there are? Well, if you take the total number 
of characters, including alternate costumes, then multiply it by the number of carts, multiply that by the total number of tires, and then multiply that by the total number of gliders, you get an astonishing 865 1920 combinations that is ridiculous now let's do some division if you want to do a 16 race grand prix with your friends and you want to race through all 64 tracks in the game without repeating any of them how many grand prix would you need to do simply take the 64 total tracks and divide it by the number of races per grand prix and you end up with four total grand prix that you'll need to do now let's put them all into practice together in one equation luckily market deluxe already does this one considering their five on-screen stats for any given character vehicle combination. On the Mario Wiki, the example shows that if you select Dry Bones, Flame Rider, Standard Tires, and Super Glider, and you want to figure out its total speed stat in the game, you take the speed values of each individual item, then you add them to get 6. Then you take that sum, add 3 to it, and divide that sum by 4. So in this example, 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 divided by 4 is 2.25, and that is correlated on that stat in the game. Let's select my boy Ludwig, give him the Circus Special, White off road Tires, and Cloud Glider. By looking at these charts, Ludwig's speed is 6, the Circus Special speed is 5, the White off road speed is 3, and the Cloud Glider has 0 speed. The total is 14, you just add 3 more to get 17, and divide that by 4 to get 4.25, and look, that is the speed stat in the game. You can do this to figure out any combination or to figure out how to get the highest stat in any category. Just a few quick topics I want to go over before ending this class. First is the concept of time. If you guys play Mario Kart, then you should already know that 60 seconds equals one minute, but also 60 minutes equals one hour, even if that's not necessarily shown on the timer. The next concept is fractions. The lap counter is a good way to understand fractions. The fraction showed on screen shows the lap you are currently on in comparison to the total number of laps offered on that track. Once you get into the final lap, you will have driven on every lap the track has to offer in when you complete a track, you will have completed three out of three laps or one whole course. Fractions are simply part of a whole, so it's important to understand that if you are studying them. Finally, we are going over probability. This is quite simple. I'm going to use computer cart probabilities for this topic. When you enter a Grand Prix or Versus race, you race against 11 other CPUs, and they can choose between 42 racers. Each character has a set of four car combinations they can race with. If they each have an equal probability, then that means there is a 25% chance that a CPU character in your race will have one of these four combinations. If you want to calculate the probability that, say, Wario will be a CPU character, well, first you have to not choose Wario as there's a 0% chance of him getting selected as a CPU if you are Wario yourself. If you are your me or a colored Yoshi, Shy Guy, Inkling, or Gold Mario, then there is an 11 out of 42 chance that Wario is one of the CPUs. If you are one of the characters that a CPU can also use, then the probability gets slightly greater and Wario has an 11 out of 41 chance of being a CPU. It's a little tricky to grasp, but once you get the hang of it, you'll ace probabilities in no time. If you guys want me to do a fully updated math video again, though, please leave a like on this video. And thank you guys so much for watching the video. I mean, this was kind of meant to just be like a fun type of video where we just learn a little bit. But if this actually helps you like do your homework assignment or like pass a quiz or something, if you're back in school, let me know in the comments because that would be crazy. But I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully this was fun. And if you appreciate it, give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.